99% water and sand. Water and sand. What's in the other 1%? Well, not water and sand. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> That's none of your business. Come on in. Please be seated. Thank you for attending this, our second last discussion regarding exploration of new land openings for the oil and gas industry. Uh, there will be no further recommendations brought forward after today, so please be prepared if you have questions. Let me answer the tough questions. Are you sure? Positive. I'm better at this than you are. Right. Hello, Chief Minister. My name is Yala. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our concerns today. And I think I speak for most of us here when I say we have many of them. My question is, how do you justify reintroducing an industry like fracking, which uses megalitres of water per well established, when areas of the territory struggling as it is with getting enough clean drinking water for their everyday use? I'll handle this one. Hello, Yala. Thanks for your question. At the moment, we haven't seen any credible evidence under our current guidelines that fracking will cause any water shortage in remote parts of the Territory. OK, but take Yambala, for example. At the height of every dry season, all their bores pump out is mud. That's water contamination, not a shortage situation. Yeah, well, what about water contamination? Do we want to talk about that for a second? OK, one at a time, please. It's OK. I'm done. Do you even know what fracking fluid is? Uh, yes, I understand it is 99% water and sand. And 1% what exactly? I don't know, but uh, presumably not water and sand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben. Until we get a list of the chemicals you plan to use in the fracking fluid, we can't be sure it's only water and sand, because it isn't. Well, I've been instructed it's a proprietary mix of chemicals that are not harmful. Yes. The exact makeup is the intellectual property of sunshine. We're talking about fracking fluid that you're pumping into our aquifers. 1% is a negligible amount by any standard. Not when you're talking about millions of litres of water. 1% suddenly gets very, very big. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave that there. I believe we have another question from the back. Chief Minister, Chief of Staff, hello. Look, I'll be honest with you, I'm not completely opposed to the notion of fracking parts of the Territory, but I have a concern, and I think it's a concern that affects all of us, not just the country folk. We're not going to make any money out of fracking. Now, I've had a look at the expenditure plan for your agreement with uh, Sunshine. That's the one we've all got access to from Treasury. And I would advise anyone who is even slightly interested to take it home and have a read for yourselves. Millions of dollars are about to be blown open and taken out of our land, and yet we still have one of the worst economies that I've seen in my 45 years in Darwin. Where does all that money go? The rebates that we offer the gas companies far outweigh the royalties that they promise us, and then they'll claim rebates on, on infrastructure, albeit infrastructure that only benefits them. And then, of course, there's some very clever accounting that makes it appear that they're running at a loss and not a profit. Which means that we, the taxpayer, end up footing the bill for the bloody gas companies. What a bloody cent comes back to us. And this, this just gets me... Chief Minister, this gets me thinking. Who is really behind all this? Anyone who has any regard for the Territory can see that this is a bloody, terrible, terrible deal. It is bad accounting. Is it bad accounting, Chief Minister? Or is there foul play at hand here? <coughs> can I, uh, talk to you after this? So, you say we're not going to make any money from fracking? Not a cent, not for years. 
I don't know how long your long-term plan is, mate, but you won't see a return on this for 40 years. And by then the gas companies will have moved on to other gas fields. 40 years? Yeah. You seem surprised, Mr Slate. Well, I am, and, uh, and it worries me. I mean, how is that possible? You oversee the government. You're in charge. I suppose I am. And sometimes it doesn't feel like I am. 